Let's try to define Internet of Things or IoT. There's many definitions, but for me the main characteristics of IoT are first, highly connected, smart, it has to be a thing. A thing means not a computer, not a phone, not a tablet. And it has to uh, propose a network physical world interface. Highly connected. Of course, it can be internet, but it can also be uh, intermittent internet to save power or because the network is unavailable for some reason. Uh, it can be long bandwidth, long distance networks like Sigfox. It can be mesh networks in case you don't have a star shaped uh, topology. Or it can be uh, local connections like uh, Bluetooth Low Energy, what we call BLE or Bluetooth 4, and uh, Zigbee. So the Internet of Internet of Things is not your usual Internet you access from your laptop. And it has to be smart. Smart does not mean the raw information from the sensor is perfect or smart. Or you have a neutral precise sensor. It's not like that. Your solution will be smart if you cross-analyze data from different basic sensors each being imperfect. You can perform a first level of uh, analysis on artificial intelligence locally on the recording platform. Then you improve your solution with a central level of uh, data analysis on the artificial intelligence. And the entire solution has to work with an imperfect connectivity on low bandwidth if you want to scale uh, on a large scale. So don't wait for the perfect sensor for your solution to work, because it will never happen. It has to be a thing. It's hard for us software engineers uh, to understand what a thing can be, because we use very complex tools like laptops all day. On the laptop, we'll use 90% of your brain. It's designed to be an exclusive tool, a very productive tool. Um, a modern touch phone could use perhaps 40% of your brain. So you can walk, uh, not run, um, and you can't drive safely using a, a modern touch phone. That's why it's forbidden, uh, usually. An old phone like an old Nokia uh, with keys on the Note touchscreen will use probably 20% of your brain. Uh, so it's a lot easier to operate, uh, but it's still not a thing. For IoT solutions, you need to target between 0 and 5% of uh, brain utilization maximum. So why this limit? Why 0, 5% maximum, would you ask? Well, you have one computer at home, or perhaps two, but you only use one at a time. But you may have 50 uh, IoT objects at home or at work or even more uh, in the future. So you don't have time to interact with uh, each of them. And you don't want to have a lot of uh, noise and LEDs and um, information from the IoT solution you have deployed uh, at home or at work. You don't want to think about it uh, while you interact with them. Natural interfaces are a lot better than uh, computer interfaces for IoT. And the best interaction is no active interaction at all. If you are not aware that you're interacting with an IoT solution, that's a good IoT solution. So first thing, no screen. That's the best way to have no interaction. Uh, a limited set of settings. That way you don't have to configure anything. And uh, limited features. There's a difference between mobile, server, and IoT solutions. In IoT solutions, uh, you really want to interact with the physical world. So it means gathering a lot of data from the environment with uh, sensors, and also acting uh, in the environment, the physical world, with uh, motors, lights, sounds you have to plan an interaction with the physical world for your IoT uh, solution. 
So why would you deploy an IoT solution at work or at home? First, to optimize, let's take an example, an automated air conditioning system. So it's your regular air conditioning system, but with a little computer inside, on internet connection, and uh, setting the perfect temperature uh, when you're at home. So of course, it could improve your daily life. So you may want to pay more to have an automated air conditioning system than a regular system. But that's just the first level of understanding of an IoT solution. Such a, a, a system could allow your electricity company to limit your power consumption during uh, summer peak days because your system would be connected to internet and potentially to the electricity company. And why would you uh, allow a connection between your private system and the electricity company, would you ask? Well, let's imagine the um, electricity company is not able to generate enough power for everybody during the three or four peak days um, in summer. Perhaps they could propose you to get uh, cheaper electricity, let's say 20% all year, um, to allow them to control your air conditioning system on limit by 10% your power consumption during the three peak days uh, only. So that seems like a, a fair deal. Uh, you could have cheaper electricity all year and have a, a small limitation during summer. So why not? Everybody wins. So think hardware and software and data as a complete solution rather than just hardware itself solving your personal problem. The second strong motivation is to collect data. So we, of course, know very well that Internet access and communication on mobile devices are already highly monitored to characterize your behavior, to sell you hats, um, to sell you a lot of stuff. But the physical world is not yet uh, monitored or in a very limited way through your GPS, for example. Knowing everything about your electrical devices, about your power consumption, uh, your behavior in the physical world, your movements at home, has a lot of value for a lot of companies. So that's a strong motivation to deploy IoT solution in your environment. Is it good for you? It depends. Maybe not. So it's up to you to be aware of that and uh, take your decisions. Just like mobile devices, a lot of IoT devices target data collection. Now let's try to see the various fields of IoT starting with wearables. First motivation to wear an IoT solution is to quantify your activity. So it's something you wear with minimal interaction, often connected to your phone with Bluetooth, uh, but it's not a typical mobile device, so you don't have a touch screen usually. Motivations um, track your health or your uh, physical activity. One of the first great products was the Nike Plus iPod solution. And nowadays we have things like uh, WeThings, Jawbone, Fitbit, and the uh, basis that is part of Intel. Then you have smartwatches. So they are not really an IoT solution because they have a complex touch screen, apps, they require a lot of interaction. So they are more like a small mobile device, sometimes connected to your phone, than a pure IoT solution. But they are still very interesting. On the right, you can see products from uh, Apple and Motorola. You also have the Pebble that is highly configurable and appreciated by geeks. Uh, at the bottom, you can see the Mika smart brand uh, with Intel uh, technology inside. And on the bottom left, uh, you can see the launch of the collaboration between Intel, Tiger and Google in Switzerland. And of course, Google Glasses, a category by itself. Just like smartwatches, we have a lot of interaction, we have a screen, um, so it's apparent. That's one of the problems of the Google Glasses, that you can see it. 
home automation is a great field of experimentation to prepare the future of smart buildings. I encourage you to follow the evolution of Google Nest, of course, but also uh, Sense Mother. When done right, uh, small robots on drones can be great IoT solutions. They are not seen as technical objects, but pets or small animals. The line between embedded solutions and IoT solutions can be very fine sometimes. I see a lot of great things coming from small companies like Max Machine with uh, Intel Nuke inside or big companies like uh, JC Deco. A great motivation to start working on IoT is just to have fun. On the right, you can see a humidity sensor connected to a board and connected to internet. So you plug the sensor in your flower pot and when there is not enough water, the board will detect that and will send a tweet to uh, alert you and uh, ask for more water. So you are just building a smart flower pot. It's fun. But uh, very smart companies like Power, for example, can go from fun to product. Um, and that's what happened with this very simple example. It is now a real product.